In this learning objective, we are going to explain the benefits as well as the limitations of ABC. There are three benefits for implementing ABC. The first one is we have more cost pools and therefore we have a more accurate product costing. The second one is we have enhanced control over overhead cost. And then finally, the third one is because we have a more accurate product costing, we have control over overhead cost, we're actually going to make better management decisions as a result of that. ABC increases product cost accuracy because it uses multiple cost pools. Instead of one plant-wide pool and a single cost driver, companies use numerous activity cost pools with more relevant cost drivers. In the Atlas Company example, we identified five activity cost pools, manufacturing, setups, purchase ordering, product development, and property and plant. The manufacturing cost pool reflected multiple manufacturing activities, including machining, assembling, and painting. These activities were included in a single pool for simplicity. In many companies, the number of activities and cost pools can be substantial. This slide shows a more likely split of the activities that were included in the manufacturing cost pool. To gain full advantage of having multiple cost pools, the cost within the pool must correlate with the driver. To achieve this, managers often characterize activities as belonging to one of the following four activity level groups when designing an ABC system. Unit level activities are performed for each unit of production. For example, the assembly of cell phones is a unit level activity because the amount of assembly the company performs increases with each additional cell phone assembled. Batch level activities are performed every time a company produces a batch of a product. For example, an ice cream producer needs to set up its machines every time it produces a batch of ice cream. The amount of time spent setting up machines increases with the number of batches produced, not with the number of units produced. Product level activities are performed every time a company produces a new type of product. For example, before a pharmaceutical company can produce and sell a new type of medicine, it must undergo very substantial product test to ensure the product is effective and safe. The amount of time spent on testing activities increases with the number of products the company produces. And lastly, we have our facility level activities, which are required to support or sustain an entire production process. For example, if you want to think of a hospital building, again, that building must be insured and heated. The property taxes must be paid, no matter how many patients the hospital treats. These costs do not vary as a function of the number of units, batches, or products. Companies can achieve greater accuracy in overhead cost allocation by recognizing these four different levels of activities and from them, developing specific activity cost pools, as well as identifying a related cost driver. Let's take a look at the types of activities, as well as examples of cost drivers for each of those activities at each level. All right, so let's start with our unit level activities. And again, I want you to think of these activities are performed each time a unit is produced. Again, if it's machine related, then an appropriate cost driver might be machine hours, whereas if it's labor related activity, then direct labor hours or cost might be a more appropriate cost driver. Right. Let me take a look at batch at level activities. Again, this is performed every time a batch is handled or processed. Again, what are examples of batch level activities, equipment setups, purchase ordering, inspections, and material handling. And as you can see, that cost driver is very different than the unit level activity cost driver. Again, we're looking at number of setups or purchases, inspections, and material moves. All right, let's move up to the next level. Again, we have our product level activities. And again, I want you to think of these activities as supporting an entire product line. An example of these activities are product, 
design as well as engineering changes. And again, that cost driver is related to those costs. We're looking at number of product designs or number of changes. And then finally, our last one, which is our facility level activities. And again, these are activities that are required in order for the production process to occur. And you have a variety of activities here. You have your managers, um, the management salaries, depreciation, property tax, and utilities. And you can see that it, an appropriate cost driver might be the number of employees managed, or it could be um, square footage. In this exercise, I'd like you to classify each of the following activities as either unit, batch, product, or facility level activities. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in the next video. In developing an ABC system, managers increase their awareness of the activities performed by the company in its production and supporting processes. This awareness helps managers classify activities as value-added or non-value-added. Value-added activities are those activities of a company's operation that increase the perceived value of a product or service to customers. Examples include engineering design, machining, assembling, and painting. Examples of value-added activities in a service company include performing surgery at a hospital, performing legal research at a law firm, or delivering packages by a freight company. Non-value-added activities are those activities that, if eliminated, would not reduce the perceived value of a company's product or service. These activities simply add cost to or increase the time spent on a product or service without increasing its perceived value. One example is inventory storage. If a company eliminated the need to store inventory, it would not reduce the value of its products, but it would decrease its product cost. Other examples include moving materials, work in process, or finished goods from one location to another in the plant during the production process, waiting for manufacturing equipment to become available, inspecting goods, and fixing defective goods under warranty. All right, in this exercise, I just want you to classify each of these activities as either value added or non value added. And the only thing I want to conclude with is that not all activities labeled non value added are totally wasteful, nor can they be totally eliminated. Um, an example would be inspection time. Um, it is a non value added activity from a customer's perspective, but few companies would eliminate their quality control functions. When managers recognize the non-value added characteristics of, the, of these activities, they are motivated to minimize them as much as possible. Right, the solutions to this exercise will be provided in the next video. Activity-based management is a tool that focuses on reducing cost and improving processes and decision making. ABC can be very beneficial, but it's not without its limitations. ABC can be expensive to use. The increased cost of identifying multiple activities and applying numerous cost drivers discourage many companies from using ABC. ABC systems are also more complex than traditional systems. And lastly, ABC does not offer complete accuracy as some arbitrary allocations remain. Despite these limitations, how does a company know when to use ABC? The presence of one or more of the following factors would point to possible use. 